Global Mobile Support, this is Greg. I am calling from my house phone because my goddamn cell phone is a piece of shit. Sir, there is no need to use that kind of language. I'm... I will use whatever fucking language I choose to. You and your service over there is pure bullshit, and I'm tired of it. Sir, I want to help. Slow down and tell me what's going on. What's going on is every time I try to fucking call or send a fucking text, nothing happens. Sir... There is a known issue with some of the phones, but there is a firm... Don't interrupt me! I am the customer, and I will be treated with respect! Or what? What? What did you just say? Nothing, sir. Your phone must have cut out there for a second. The phone is fine. I am on my house phone because the one I bought from you just doesn't fucking work, you bastards! Well, I can fix that. What I need... What I need from you is to shut up and let me... Finish my thoughts! I would be amazed if there is any substance to your thoughts. What the fuck did you say? You fucking piece of shit! Nothing, sir. Again, I think it's your phone that's malfunctioning. If you just calm down, we can get it back up and running. This phone works just... This is my house phone! Get going. You don't want to be late again. Oh, you go for me. I'll give you anything you want. No, get your ass moving. All right. I'm turning it on. I need some music to get going. Whatever. Just get going. Don't forget about the appointment today. 4.30. Yeah, it's all booked. I'll be here at 4 sharp. some random person who doesn't work here think if they saw you slacking off with your feet up I imagine they'd wish they had a job where they could sit with their feet up all day how was your weekend Did you get any skin I'm married and unlike some saps out there I get it anytime I want I just have to beg and plead and will sometimes bribe dude that must be tough check this out went out Saturday spent the night with that Lisa chick oh yeah that's a chick you've been spending all your time with lately the one who saved the local skanks from being exposed to your filthy genes. I love spending time with her. It's just like talking to myself. You think I got a fucking dirty mouth? This girl swears more than I do. And drink? She can even drink me under the table.
seat, but it's all right. And it's all It's like if they made a clone out of me, but only a woman. Did you sleep with her? Of course I did. The J to the R never leaves the floor without the tap dance. Remember that. A night with me, and ladies feel like they've been dancing all night. Magical. I think you need to speak with Don when he gets in. What? Why? Because you just admitted to me that you spent a magical night with someone just like you. Exactly like you. And you likened it to a night with a clone of yourself. Sounds, you know, rather gay. No, it doesn't make it or me gay. I'm just saying, she's perfect for me. I'm not gay. That's just... That's just gay. Why would he think that meant that I was gay? Dude, why the fuck would you hit me in the ass? You love it, now get to work. Dude, this isn't basketball. <laughs> and I'm not gay, bitch. If I was gay, you would know it. Check your email yet? It is too early for email. Why? Check it, bro. The director herself is having a meeting with us in 1A. Fuck. But what, take back the hour? I thought we were supposed to have less meetings and shit and more honest work. What do you think this is, man? Change in business philosophy? Work harder speech? Or no, my favorite, the do more with less speech where she cuts half the operating budget. I don't know. All that I know is anytime she calls a meeting, some dark shit's about to happen. God damn it. I just wanted to get this week over with with no drama. One dramaless week, that's all I want. Fuck's sakes. What time's the dictator's speech? 2.30, 1A. Bring a sock with a cue ball in it. If she's gonna lay us off, the least we can do is whip it out her vag when we walk out the door. Global mobile phone support, this is Rick. Mother help Facker. You. I know you like motorbikes. That's cool. We all have crotch rockets and big mean hogs, but why the fuck are you waving at every biker you pass? Mobile, mobile. I followed you for 30 minutes last night and you waved at every goddamn one of them. JR, I've told you this before. It's a sign of brotherhood, a sign of belonging, a sign of respect. I think it's gay. I saw you last night wiggling your fingers as I passed you. How are you gonna look all badass wiggling your fingers? Wait, please tell me those pants have an ass. You know, I know some bikers that would cut your scrotum off and make you eat it for saying such things. It's a sign of respect, simple as that. Yeah, well, I'm starting a new trend. Every time I'm driving in my car, and I pass a fellow car driver, I'm waving at them. Little old granny go-go driving a cake car, she's getting a wave. The rich yuppie driving a Benz, he's getting a wave. Fuck it. I'll even wave the white boy blasting 50 cent. It's a respect thing. I respect my car driving brethren, and we're gonna rule the road again and take it back and shit. You know, I can actually feel my brain cells dying as you speak. My car driving brother, what's up? What's up? Will someone please say something? The silence is unbearable. You just told us that we've got to lay off our friends? Damn near all the staff? What do you want us to say? Thanks for delaying the inevitable head chops for another couple of months. And now we've got to go out and tell the lucky teams what's going on. Uh, how are we supposed to help them feel secure about their jobs? That is your job to motivate your people however you can. That is why you are managers. We have to be down there in a few minutes, so you better figure out what you need to do. One more thing. Corporate has also seen fit to make some VP cutbacks. Now you're all safe, but I have decided to take my package. Now, I only have three years anyway, and they offered me the full deal right now, so I took it while I could. They also asked my opinion about my successor. Chris, I've given them your name as well as my letter of confidence. Congratulations. Come April 1st, this is your show. Will there even be a show by April 1st? You know as well as I do once they start chopping. They won't stop until the forest is nothing but dead land and tree stumps. I don't know if I'm supposed to be happy, or if I should start updating my resume. I have seen more closures and reopenings in my 30 years than I care to remember. These cutbacks are some of the harshest that I've seen. Can I promise you that you will have a job here next year? 
Next month? Even next week? No. But I can tell you that corporate responds to performance at the lowest cost. No matter how well the company is doing, there is always some accountant at corporate who wants to save some money and with a trim here and a tuck there. I know the perception of me is that I'm a hard bitch to work for. I push too hard and I spend too little. But because of that, we have always delivered. And as a result, corporate has kept their nose out of our house. Here's my advice. Motivate. Keep your people on their toes. Keep them generating fresh ideas. Push them to be the best that they can be. Keep rewards low. Not so low that people don't feel valued. But not so high that eyebrows are raised. This is your show now, to shape, to change as you see fit. You'll do a good job if you remember the goal. Yeah, keep performance high and costs low. Sorry, my sister. No hello, no wave? And what's with the spyware 007? Uh, nothing. Just let me go on with my day. Bad night, Dawn. Lover spat. Is the missus okay? Dawn, are you the victim of domestic abuse? Because if so, I mean, we can help. Seeing as how you're both men, well, sort of, we could beat the shit out of them for you. Wait, Dawn's gay, so... His other half is gay, so wouldn't that be like us beating a woman? Don, seriously, are you okay? What's going on? Jesus Christ, Don! What the fuck happened? You look like a wax statue that's been melting in the sun for three hours. Why must I work with such idiots? Just leave me alone. I just want to get on with my day and get it over with. Holy shit, Clark, come take a look at this. It looks like his eye exploded. Oh, yeah. Looks like a concussive injury to me. Lack of treatment looks to be the cause of the flare-up, though. I don't care why it's red. Just back off, JR. Dawn, is that vein in your forehead supposed to be doing push-ups? <laughs> no wonder why your face is dissolving. Okay. All right. This is what happened. I was giving Owen a blowjob last night. And as he came, I sneeze, and so I've got a cum-covered dip jabbed in my eye. And this is what happens. Now, the worst part of it is, is I think I scared him into never wanting oral sex again. I miss that. Yeah, that was, that was nothing. Um, yeah, I'm still here. Right here, Don. Let's go. Show me your aim. That is why I'm not gay. Though, if you think about it, at least enough to suck a dick again. I would think that's a bonus. Yeah, I knew it was concussive. That's up. Oh, uh, hey, Chris. What's uh, how's your day going so far? Well. It was going much better up until 15 minutes ago, when I got a call about an irate customer you were dealing with last night. Were you confrontational with a Mr. Bay about a reset? Are you serious? All that guy did was talk over top of me and interrupt. If he had given me 20 minutes, I would have been able to fix this problem like that. It's a simple reset. Been doing this for five years, and it's the same equipment. I mean, I knew his issue even before he finished talking. Well, you're probably right, but I'm gonna have to get you to call him back and apologize. You serious? I have to call that prick? Well, higher-ups don't care. They just want happy customers. Fine, I'll call them. Shitty deal. That's what we do. Take the good and the bad. It's just give them a call and give them a with. Don't forget to smile. Hello. Hi. Hello, sir. This is Greg from Global Mobile Service, and uh, we spoke last night. I figured I'd hear from you today. What can I do for you? 
Well, sir, I, I just wanted to call and, uh, because I owe you an apology for being rather abrupt last night. It was... Well, son, I hated to call your bosses, but you need to know that the customers are always right. I, 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 I see your point, sir. It's like this. In your world, we pay your bills. So if I ask you to eat a plate full of shit, if you want to keep me as a happy global mobile customer, then you have to chow down. Yes, sir, and I apologize for putting the wrong vibe out there. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh-huh. You take care. Fucking kill me now. I cannot deal with these high and mighty fuck nuts anymore. You should pay him a visit. Oh man, he actually even lives here. One of these days, I'm just gonna find a guy in this database, go to his house, and beat the living fuck out of him for all the abuse I've had to deal with. Anyway, man, I'm taking a piss before the next call. you have with your kids. It's the first thing I learned. Like you, you go number two, you wash your hands. You do not pass go, you do not exit the building. You wash. Where were you two Nancy's at? In the bathroom pulling a one-eyed dog? Do you know the manager in accounts? Who? Shit tips? Yeah, why? Did you just call him shit tips? Yeah, he's been seen taking shits and then leaving the bathroom without washing his hands. It's happened to all of us, even you two perfect bitches. Every so often, the toilet paper rips and your fingers cross through the darkest of the holes. And as is an end result, <laughs> you have shit-covered fingertips. So, I call them shit tips. That is sick. That's awesome. Hold on, sloppy tits. Just a hypothetical. I right, go. One million bucks, yours. Free and clear. Easy money. Briefcase full of cash. No more call center. No more bill collectors. Just you. One million dollars. And free time. What's the catch? A million bucks? We got it a million, but for what? You gotta let a dude have a shot at your ass. Any dude. I don't care if it's Don. I don't care if it's a homeless guy we see walking down the street every day. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You just gotta let him have one shot at your ass. So in and out, one shot, that's it? No. Oh no. He's gotta bust a nut. Oh um, my, can't do it. Okay, so the guy gets my ass, and I get a million bucks, and no one ever knows? Ever it goes to your grave. Why are you even contemplating this? No, a shot in the ass is a shot in the ass. No one would know. You would know. How are you ever going to fall asleep again with that memory in your head of the one time that dude blew his juice in your caboose? Dude, a million bucks would make me sleep like a baby. Yeah, I know that look. What's the proposition? A million bucks yours, but you gotta let a dude take a shot in your ass, but a full fucking shot. Dude's gotta break it off in your ass. Hmm. See, he's so disgusted he just walks away like a real man should. Clark, come on, I can't be the only one who thinks it's not worth it. You guys need to talk to Don before you make a decision on this. I guarantee you the first time that he was popped, he probably clenched down so hard he would have ripped that guy's dick off. It takes a lot of training to not clinch up right away when something tries to get in there. And all that training fucking hurts. Shit tips could apply right here. <laughs> Wouldn't a million bucks make the pain a lot easier? Well, for a million, no. Uh, paying off the debt, the bike, the car, the house, uh, just, just wouldn't be worth it. Wouldn't be worth it. Thank you, at least we have one other real man here. 1.36 million, however, and I'm debt free. Man books in hand, that's not bad. Yes! 1.36 million it is. Clark's in. Greg? Rick? Fuck no. Uh, you had me at a million. Clark's in. Greg's in. Rick's out. What about you, JR? Fuck no! I'm no fag! Dawn, you got the cash? These guys will do whatever you want. Fucker gets us every time. He gets you two. I'm on to his shit now. Fags.
as we know times are tough and no company has escaped the effects. But despite our track record, corporate has decided that if we are to survive, serious cutbacks are required. Centers in Ohio, Alberta, and Vermont will be closing, and their workloads will transition to offshore partners as soon as possible. Now, everyone in this room, as well as the teams of Ms. Charters and Mr. Davies, you will staff the North America Support Offices. Now, in order to keep costs as low as possible and remain a viable solution, a 5% wage reduction has been instituted. However, with the economic turnaround that is predicted in the next year or two, of course that will be reversed. It is easy to see the negatives in a trying situation. I need each and every one of you to promise me that you will not just try to be the best, but that you will be the best. Your futures depend upon it. I am pleased to announce that Chris Wu will be my replacement. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. Thank fact, I just bought a house. I just found out I'm pregnant. Okay, guys, first things first. The director is heading down to the conference room. She'll be taking in the other teams one by one to let them know the news. Now what I'd like for all of us is to treat their situation with understanding and support. Could have been us in that room and not in this one. Now I know there's a lot of questions and concerns, so one at a time, please fire them off. How much time did you have to spend on your knees to weasel into this position? I didn't have to do anything, except promise the director I'd fire your sorry ass before the end of the year. <laughs> Come on. Clark, go ahead. What's to become of your position? Well, as per standard procedure, there will be an official posting for my position. There will be an interview process, and a lucky candidate will be chosen based upon that interview. Past performance and their reliability record. <clears throat> Chris, first of all, I am really happy for you. Please don't take offense to this. But how the hell are we supposed to know how long we're going to have a job for? I mean, if they just close all the other centers, they shit can three quarters of our staff, it just sounds like we're some kind of fail-safe until the offshore partners get their shit together. I mean, after today, it just seems inevitable that they're going to shut this down and the whole shit show is going to go overseas. I don't have an answer for that, Rick. All I know is as long as I'm in a position of influence, I will fight every day to prove your worth, our worth. If you're out of a job, then I'm out of a job. And that means that I failed you all. And I never fail. Got it? Now I do have some good news for you guys. You've got the next two days off paid. Don't worry. Just making some changes to the phone system. But instead of having you guys sit around here doing nothing like JR does, <laughs> go home, spend some time with your family, and I'll see you guys in two days. Go on, get out of here. All of them scattered little eyes and make no sales She pulls a swimmer, it goes swimmer alone So we get to go home for two days? Bonus! Think about it, Jay. You want to tell a bunch of people they're out of work and then have them all walk past those doors? They see us in here still working? Freak out? 
start asking questions to security. Or worse, they open the door to try to tell us because they think that we don't know yet. Part of it may be the phone switch, but I guarantee you they just want this building empty. So no one goes ape shit before they hand in their badge and are off the premises. I gotta get away from here, man. Let's go grab a coffee or something a little more stiff. Thanks, man. No, I had this afternoon booked off anyways. We gotta see a pediatrician. Hopefully get some answers while my six-year-old is still the size of a three-year-old. Good luck, bro. Let me know how it goes. Make sure to keep us in the loop. I will. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, buddy. Dad? Hey, Doc. Well, I've had a look at everything. And what it comes down to is we're not really sure what's going on with your little guy. We know he's not growing. We know he's not putting any weight on, but we're not exactly sure what for. What do you mean you don't know what's going on? How can you not know what's going on? You're doctors. You know, for 90% of the cases out there, we know exactly what's going on. But every once in a while, there's a special little someone, like your little guy, he comes along, and he challenges everything we think we know about medicine. And it causes us to look a little deeper inside of ourselves, and sometimes to call upon our medical peers. And when we do that, it takes time. So, what does this mean? What do we do? What are we supposed to plan for? I wish I had an answer for you. But all I can tell you is this. Pray for the best. He's a special needs child. Don't ever limit what your teacher show him thinking he won't get it. He needs the two of you, just to keep on doing what you're doing. Listen, Mom, Dad, I know this is a lot to process. If you have any questions, if you want to go over anything we went over here today, call my office and schedule an appointment. You know, all I have to do is take one little look at that boy over there, and I know you're doing exactly what you should be doing. percent wage reduction percent wage reduction percent wage reduction Ohio Alberta and Vermont will be closing will be closing and their workloads will transition to offshore partners as soon as possible will transition to offshore partners as soon as possible He's a special needs child. He's a special needs child. He's a special needs child. I wish I had an answer for you. I wish I had an answer for you. He's a special needs child. He's a special needs child. He's a special needs child. I wish I had an answer for you. Rick, why don't you go down to the mall and pick up that new game you wanted? Babe, hello. 
What? Oh, come on, Rick. You can't just sit here for days feeling sorry for yourself. Can't you just iron your clothes and let me just sit here? Why are you home again? Shouldn't you be working? I told you, they're upgrading the phones. Dawn's home, JR's home, call them. Everybody's home. Hello? Hey Don, it's Joy. Rick's wife. Oh, hi. How are you, honey? I'm good, Don. But I really need your help. Okay. Rick is sinking into the crack of the couch. He needs to get out of the house for an hour or so, just to take his mind off things. Oh my god, is he okay? Is it a, about the news at work? I mean, I couldn't sleep a wink last night. What? What happened at work? Is he okay? Oh, he, he didn't tell you? Oh, he's okay. We're okay. I mean, our team is safe. It's just, you know, there's been a lot of people that has been let go. You know, a lot of downsizing and offshoring, you know. But we're okay. Don't worry. Oh my god. I knew he was upset. But I just figured it was the same old I hate my job period he goes through. Then we had an appointment with a specialist to discuss Duncan. Don, you're still gay, right? I could use a good man for five to ten minutes to remind me how I should be loved. Hey, for you, dear, I can make an exception. Just make sure not to tell a one. He can be such a sensitive schoolboy sometimes. Do you think we can steal that sad-looking lump of self-pity over there? I assure you we're gonna bring him back badly bruised. Oh my god, yes. Take him with you and do not bring him back till he's at least verbal again. You know what, man? Why don't you guys just go without me? I really just feel like sitting here and thinking about things for a while. No, no, no. Look, either you get off your ass, or I'm gonna come in. We're gonna go and cuddle on the couch. I'm gonna get Joyce to make us some caramel popcorn. I'm gonna tell you all about that time where Owen teabagged me in the back of his mom's car when my fingers were in. Okay. Okay. I'll go. Just spare me the gay by play next time. All right. Hey, Alright, Eric. Thanks for coming. Alright. Come on, let's go. We got here to pick up. Yeah. Alright, listen up, ladies. We got three rules here. Count them three. Rule number one if you're hit, you're dead. You get off the field and you wait till the next round to start. Rule number two. No nut shots. Wouldn't dream of it. Nut shots all day. Rule number three. This is a war game. Key word here is game. So have fun. We're gonna start in about five minutes. So get to it. Great, thank you. All right, boys. I want to hear nothing but screaming valley bitches. <laughs> wow, this is so invigorating. I just feel like a soldier walking into battle. <laughs> that was a warning shot. If you're a soldier, there's no ass slapping. Don't ask, don't tell. Got it, corporate Sally? Man, are they all gonna hurt like that though? Owen's dick jab didn't hurt as much. Oh wait, am I dead? Am I gonna have to wait till round two?
getting that shot. Yeah, right. <laughs> City bitches. Guys, you ever just sit back and look at where you are in life? I mean, do you ever ask yourself if working at a call center in your 30s is where you thought you'd end up? What's wrong with what we do? We get paid. I get laid. What the fuck else is there? It's just about the point where I hate this shit. Like, I loathe every customer I help and I don't even know them. I've just been doing it for so long that I resent every time that little ding goes off my headset. You know, I love helping people. I love the sound in their voice when, you know, we finally figured out the problem and, and you know, they realize they've got a solution. I love my friends at work. You guys are great. Hell, sometimes I even like the politics. The thing I don't like, however, is the fact that they keep us under their thumbs. There's always something new. There's always a, a new product to master, a new skill set to learn. Never enough time to do it. I mean, Jesus, there, there, there's always some little thing that hinders progress in this company and, and I don't know sometimes it just gets to me. I hate when they constantly change everything that we just learned. <laughs> if you ask me it's pretty gay. Now why do you always uh, say gay when you uh, perceive something is bad? I mean we hang out all the time. Do you think I suck? I mean it's not just you it's everyone it's society. If something's horrible automatically it's gay. Just so you know, like every time you perceive like a negative situation as gay, it offends me. So please, JR, don't do it anymore. Sorry, Don, I didn't mean to hurt you, bro. It's all right, hon, just remember, I can hear everything. Okay. Look, it's like this. You, me, we are never gonna get any further up the corporate food chain because we're not part of the corporate boys club. The only people that I see who make it are the ones with the brownest of noses, the sharpest of knives, and the shallowest of morals. It's like kill or be killed, and it stops the hardest working people from making it. Yeah, I hear you there. You know, I've done everything they've asked me to do. I've followed every career path, I've learned every product, I've never missed a day, and every time I go to an interview, what do I get back? A PFO. What's a PFO? <laughs> Please, Please fuck, fuck off. off. <laughs> You know, I finally figured it out. After all the do more with less speeches, the fear that's constantly over our heads about potential layoffs, the 2.7% raises every year, the 5% pay cut. It's about control. They give us just enough to trap us so that we won't leave, but not enough to make a difference. And they all do it. They work to together to keep wages the same. So if you quit, where are you gonna go? A call center down the street? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna make the exact same wage. Just sit down, shut the fuck up, and take a call. It's bullshit and I'm tired of it. I really need to start thinking about my future, my family's future, and how I want us to be able to live. I want to be happy. And what the fuck do you enjoy? Games? Music? What, do you want to be a goddamn game tester? You can't just go ahead and jump up and change your career midlife. It doesn't work like that. I'm doing exactly what I want. I'm happy with my life, with my man. If I'd want anything, I'd want to marry Owen. You know, uh, I, I, I've worked in the call center, I've worked before the call center, in the call center, and I'll work after it. It's Owen that makes me want to get up and enjoy life. I don't know, the thing that I guess gets to me the most is the fact that no matter what you do sometimes, you just can't get anywhere. I, I want to be rewarded, honestly rewarded for the work that I do. Not just, you know, shove my nose six inches up some boss's ass. You know what makes me happy? My son. I love my boy. I love every minute that I'm with him. 
And I love that joy's always there with a look or a touch. Christ's just being there. And I love that look that he gets when he learns something new. Like that, holy fuck, Dad, did you, did you know that or did you see that? <laughs> yeah. Like I want to share every moment like that with Joy and him. Well, you're all crazy. I don't care what I do. I just want to get paid, hang out with my friends, and enjoy my day. Shit, the only way this job could get any better is if I had a TV at my desk where I could watch soaps and shit. I'm gay and I don't watch soap operas. Owen watches them. I think you need to do some soul searching. Fuck this cack. That shit is cheesy, but it helps me get that ass. Ladies love it when you can talk about their shows. Let me ask you something. Why do you guys always say fack and cack? Why don't you just use the real words? <laughs> if you say fack and a customer hears it on a call or something, and let's say you tell the manager, if the manager checks it out, you could say you didn't you didn't say fuck, right? So you're clear. Only me can work with a bunch of guys who will find a way to swear just by changing a vowel. I'll have to try that on Owen tonight. <laughs> All right, see you, man. All right, later. See you guys. <laughs> you going with him? Yeah, fuck it. Why not? I know. Kick his ass in some Call of Duty. Nice. Right. See ya. Later, see ya. guys. All right, just you and I, Jeeves. Take me home. Hey Don, thanks man. Jared told me this was your idea. I never would have guessed in a million years that you would think to get the guys together for some paintball. I just never pegged you as a paintball man. Ricky, Ricky, are you really that dense? That was not my idea at all, darling. I never want to be shot with those little balls again. Just <laughs> sit there and watch your mouth. Well, if it wasn't your idea, then whose was it? Really? Uh, let me tell you something. I love Owen because he gets me. I don't need to open my mouth for him to know if I'm uh, upset, happy, content, horny. And that's how I know he's the man for me. I don't need to say anything for him to know what's on my mind. Every morning, he knows to stay away from me for at least a half hour because he knows I'm not a morning person. And I know I can act like a witch being burnt at the stake if I'm bothered before my morning coffee. Now, there's a lot of unhappy couples out there. And it's just because they don't listen to each other. They listen for the words, but sometimes what a person has to say the loudest is without any words at all. And you have that. that lady at home, she didn't need you to tell her that there was something upsetting you. She just knew. The news you got about your work, then your son, your body language said it all. She called me. She wanted me to get you out of the house because she was worried about you. Ricky, we're lucky. We found our soulmate on first attempt. You hold on to her. Because she's going to be your biggest, strongest support beam in your life. And you will be hers. Just do your job. Make sure they don't want for anything. Love them and everything will be fine. She told you about Duncan? Yeah. I don't think I can do it, Don. I don't know if I'm strong enough to handle a special needs kid. I hate my job. I hate that I have to go in there every fucking day and help total fucking dumbasses. But I can't change that now. That kid needs me more than ever, and I don't think I can do it. I'm not built for it, man. I'm just not that guy. I mean, I love him so much. All I can think about is that I'm going to fail him, and it breaks me to think that. Now, you listen to me. I grew up uncomfortable in my own skin. Embarrassed at everything about myself. I hated the person looking back at me in the mirror. I was gay. 
I hid in that closet until I was 22. You want hard? You spend your whole life lying to everyone about who you are. Lying to your friends, lying to your family. You know how many nights I almost ended it all? Because I didn't think I was strong enough to admit who I really was to my friends and family, but more importantly to me. It wasn't until I went to my aunt's house one time out of the blue, she just asked me when I was going to tell my mom I was gay. Once I got over the initial shock of her question, I told her, I don't think I can. That wonderful, loving lady she just sat down next to me, held my hand, and she told me that whatever created life, Whatever you believe that to be, it'll never give you more than you can handle. It'll give you hard times, it'll give you real life tests, but you'll overcome it and you'll become a better person for it. I believe that then so much so that I decided to tell my mom and dad and all my friends that I was gay. I lost my friends. For years, I lost my dad. But my mom, my mom, she, she accepted it. And me. Your son, his health problems, they're not a burden. They're a test. It was given to you because someone strong needs to look after that boy. It's your job. It was given to you and choice. You hate your job. You hate what you've become, but that's on you. You can change that. Use that news as the reason to change your path. Now don't for one second doubt your ability to love and care for that child. Because the minute you do, you failed him. And that, that kind of failure, you can't ever change. This will cheer you up. I'm sorry, Don, but this is gay. Leading the Rainbow Parade. What's he doing? Hey, JR, come here for a sec. So, um, what's up, Jay? Yo, check it out. Have you guys ever, you know, shaved down there? Are you asking me if I ever put a razor sharp device next to my cock and balls to give him a shave? Have you ever? Hell no, why on earth? Jay, did you shave your sack? Well, no. Of course not. I shaved everything else, bought my nut sack. Good. Hey, oh, sh you'll never go back. Oh, I had to give little Jay a little buzz cut. Man, <laughs> with your inverted prairie dog, you must look like a toddler. You better grow that shit in for your girl sees it, or get a pupae or something. I had to <laughs> do it. I didn't have a choice. Well, wait now. What on earth could cause you to have to shave the Wookiee? Well, last night, I was just sitting there watching the game when Lisa started to go down on me. So I just did what any other guy would do. Sat there, enjoy getting a beach while watching the game. Well, it's going good. Blah, blah, blah. Then she stops, laughs, gets up, walks out of the room. I thought she was crazy because I put my hands down there and I felt the package was fine. Then I felt it all gobbed up. Fuck, guys, she was chewing gum. Oh, are you serious? No. It fell out. She must not have noticed because it was worked in there pretty good. Fact, Jay, did you try to get it out? I sat in a cold ass bathtub for two hours trying to get it loose. I looked like a pervert sitting there fiddling with my pubic hair. By the time I was done, 
I was so cold, well, let's just say I'd know what I look like as a woman. Actually, you know, I've heard that peanut butter will actually get gum out of hair, but I can't speak to the validity yeah, I of that. I heard that too. So you just shaved it, all of it. What else was I supposed to do? Sitting in front of the mirror with my pre-puberty sized cack and sack. Global Mobile. I grabbed the razor and I started to trim well. Before I knew it, I looked like a cancer patient with patches here and there, so I went for broken shaved at all. But today, fuck, it's so itchy. It feels like there's a crab convention going on down there. But don't tell her I told you, because, well, she's coming today for lunch, and I don't want to no. get all pissy with me. No! I will not! No. No! Look, can I... <sighs> this asshole from the Deep South doesn't want to talk to me, because I'm a woman. You're still getting calls from people who won't speak to a woman? I don't understand that. Give here. Hello, sir. My name is Jeff, and I'm Jen's manager. How can I help? You can start by giving that woman something to do other than helping customers. I want to speak to someone of my intellect. So, you don't want to speak to the smartest person on our team because she's a woman? You would rather hang up, call back, so you can talk to a man? You're damn right. I'm all for equal rights, as long as it doesn't affect me. How could some broad help me anyway? I'm calling because my phone is broken, not because I need some cooking advice. You could quite possibly be the most idiotic person I've ever spoken to. And I speak to idiots every day for a living. You, you are their champion. Boy, you don't want to piss me off. Where I come from, we talk with our fists. And where do you come from, the Paleolithic era? You're a manager, and you're making up words. How dumb you think I am? Well, I know this, Chet. I'm looking at your address right now, along with your phone number. And I have three weeks vacation left. The way I see it, me and my friend here could be down there in about two hours. I watch her beat you to a pulp with the very phone you called in on. We go for drinks, check the local cuisine, and head back home. I still have 21 days vacation left. You Flag his serial number for non-payment. That way when he calls back, billing a deal with him for a week or so. Rick? Yeah? Thanks, but I don't need you to fight my battles. I'm used to dealing with socially inept people. I know, I wasn't. I just need a laugh and that did it. Global Mobile Support, how can I help you? Are you okay? You took that like a champ. God, what the fuck? Who threw that? I'm gonna rip somebody's nuts off and shove them up their ass. Shit, JR, what are you gonna grab now when you're bored at work? Fuck, you threw that at me? It was an accident, 100%. I was trying to hit Clark and then you came in. I was coming here to tell you something. I was gonna tell you over lunch. Now you're gonna piss me off. Guess what? I'm fucking pregnant and it's yours. What the fuck? Jesus, JR, she tells you she's pregnant so you smack her head around? Great start, man. Give me a hand, would ya? Fuck, Rick. I'm sorry, man. Don't say sorry to me, moron. Apologize to her. She's going to be the mother of your child. You better used to apologizing now. And given the news, I'm going to let this one slide. But hit me in the face with the ball and drop me on the floor. That's the last time you're allowed hurting me. You got it? Yeah, I got it. So, how did this happen? About two months ago, I'm drunk as shit down at the pub. I get hit on by a child trapped in a man's body. Almost a man's body. I feel sorry for him, so I take him home takes longer to pop popcorn than it does for this guy to get off. Two minutes max. I was fucking pissed. I had to flip my own fucking bean. I don't know, he's like a sick puppy. You can't 
drown them. You want to just put a choke collar on them and make them do whatever the fuck you want. And now I'm stuck with him. I failed about a hundred nightmare sticks, and he has no choice but to marry me now. There's no fucking way I'm raising his little ADD terror child on my own. Fuck that. But something else happened too. I fell in love with the little snowballer. I don't know how it happened, but he's got me. I love you, but you scare me. Come on, let's go grab a coffee or something. Well, coffee for me and green tea. For you. Hey, Rick, got a few minutes? Sure, boss, come on in. No, how about down the boardroom? Sure, okay. Yeah. Rick, relax. I just want to talk to you about a promotion. Promotion? Originally, I was going to post for my old job. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized I need someone that I can depend on. And if we're going to remain a factor in the higher-ups plans, I realize that I have to align myself with people that I can trust. I look around this room and I see three people who could be a good solid leader. And that's good. Solid is good. But what I need is someone that the staff look up to and appreciate. And someone who's just one of the guys. I also need someone who can step into a leadership role and bust some heads if need be. And I've looked at the numbers and Rick, you're the guy that can do this for me. Now before you answer, I've already secured a $15,000 pay raise and a $5,000 one-time bonus for accepting a managerial role. I need a rattlesnake who knows when to stay hidden, just listening and observing, and at the right moment, instill the fear of God in their target. What do you say? Can you be my go-to guy? I'm your man. Congratulations. I was worried about what I was going to cut to make up for that 5% pay loss. This is a relief. But how are you going to get past posting for the job? Oh, I'll still post for it. And I'll interview for it. But really, in the end, Rick, you're just the best man for the job. Remember, this conversation never took place. And as for that 5% pay cut, we'll say it was going to affect you. But luckily for us, pay cuts don't hit management. Now, if, if anyone asks about this meeting, it was nothing more than me asking your opinion on some new software for logging customer calls. Got it? Yeah, got it, man. Congratulations. Thank you. What's going on, Rick? Uh, it was nothing, man. He wanted my opinion on some new software for the logs. Okay. Hello? Joy, it's me. Holy shit, listen to this. I don't know what's going on around here, but Chris just offered me a management position. Are you for real? I'm, yeah, I'm gonna get $15,000 more a year and a $5,000 bonus. Can you fucking believe that? Babe, that's fantastic, but... But? But what? I don't know, Rick. It's just... It's just I got that feeling lately, and you've said in the past you hate your job, that you're unhappy there. Is this new role really going to be any different? With the news that we just got about Duncan, that's your reaction? Are you really going to be any happier? Joy. This new job means that we don't have to worry about getting him whatever he needs. We can get all the extra stuff that we want. But are you unhappy at your job because of money? Or because you don't like your job and what you're doing with your life? If you're unhappy only because of money, then I'll cancel going to dad's tonight. I'll get some wine and we'll celebrate your raise and promotion tonight over a candlelit dinner and slow dance until we're too tired to dance anymore. But if you're unhappy because you hate the fact that your role has been to answer customers' stupid questions all day, then this new position isn't going to change that. All it means now is you have to answer to higher ups about the same stupid shit. And I can guarantee you, the dumbest thing you've ever heard any customer say on the phone 
won't be near as dumb as the questions you'll get from the head assholes. Jesus. I'm trapped. No matter what I do, I'm trapped. I gotta go. You're right, Joy. You and Duncan go to your dad's for the night. I'm gonna go out with the boys for the evening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Ricky? Yeah? I love you, big man. I love you too, Joy Bell. Kiss my man for me, okay? You know I will. Ma'am, I'm simply trying to help. I can't help you if you're jumping all over the place and talking don't over me. Don't you dare tell me what I can and cannot do. I don't need you. You ain't shit. What? Do you think you're special because you answer your phone for a living? My daughter can answer her phone too, and she's four. Ma'am, you called me for help. I didn't call you, so you can continue carrying on, or you can calm down, and we'll figure this out. I don't want your help, you dumb, useless piece of shit. You can get me some Ma'am, there's no one else here. It's just me. It's the end of the day, so you're stuck with me. Well, get me a manager then, because I'm done talking to you, talking to me like a three-year-old. I make more in one month than you do all year. You know how? I got off my ass and worked hard for it. I didn't just settle down to be a sheep in a fucking call center. Now get me a manager. You know what, ma'am? I would love to get you a manager, but really, there's no one here that speaks your language. What? There's nobody there that speaks the English fucking language? No, ma'am, there's no one here that speaks mean, mad-at-the-world, miserable cunt. <gasps> Get your ass to the boardroom now. You know what? I'm sick and tired of this job. I'm better than this? You know what? We're all better than this. If you want to fire me, go ahead. I'm not giving you the satisfaction. You know what? I quit. <laughs> With all the commotion, I never even got a chance to congratulate you. I'm only going to tell you this once, though. You're going to be a father. So all this bullshit in your past that turned people off from wanting to be your friend, that's the shit that made you fun to be around. Now, I'm not saying you can't do any of that shit anymore, but your life comes second. Lisa and that baby come first. They're going to count on you, man. It's up to you. Myself and these guys, we'll be here for you, but only you can be there for Lisa and that baby. And I swear to God, if you ever do something to damage or hurt that baby, I will beat you to within an inch of your life. Yeah, man, and I'll be there to help you too, but if you fuck this up, I'm definitely going to be with Rick. And I love ancient medieval studies. You don't even <laughs> want to know what I'll do to you. Fuck, okay, boys, I get it, I get it. And you, you crazy bastard, miserable cunt. <laughs> now, you're my hero for sure, but what the hell happened there? Man, it was the communication meeting, and then, you know, I just can't do it anymore. So I went home, talked to the wife, and decided, you know, it was now or never. So you were planning on quitting? Oh, fuck no. I was going to quit in September. Uh, why September? In September, I started as a police cadet in King's Police Academy. Excellent. Wow, you're really doing it. But how? Isn't that expensive? Fucking really expensive. But we're going to sell the house, move in with my mom, and Julie's going to keep working, so we'll have enough money to stay afloat, pay the bills in school, until I finish. When you pull me over for speeding, I guess you're going to remember this dinner. Yeah, I'll remember this dinner, and the nipple twist, the ass slaps, and the sack punches. Then I'm going to call How'd Lisa and see how you're doing. Then we'll go from there. You know, you did quit. So why not go out the way you always said you wanted to? Live the fantasy of everyone who's taken shit from a customer because it was their job to. Now it's your time to go. This isn't something some corporate businessman like yourself's going to want to see. Time to head out? Yeah, uh, no. Time to write a PFO of my own. I'm in. So what's the plan? Well, what was it he said to you? Well, he said every once in a while you had to eat a plate of shit to keep your customer happy. Man. Hooker. Uncle C! <laughs> as long as there's life, I'm good. What? Who is that, Uncle C? Oh, that's Greg. You can just ignore Greg. Oh, I would love to ignore Greg, but right now the bad man is <laughs> killing Becca! I said... What the fuck is Becca? Be uh, Becca's the plant. Your family's fucking it's, insane. They're not insane. They're just well connected to the earth. That's all. I'm sorry, Hooks. Um, he's 
you know, not connected to the, to the world around them the way you are. Sorry, sweetie. Why are you here, Uncle C? Well, there's a friend of mine that, um, well, there's a friend of mine that kind of got stepped on the way Becca got stepped on. And we're looking to exact a little revenge. Okay, great. But what do you need me for? Uh, do you still have those rabbits? <laughs> sure. We have dozens of them now. Do they still poop? Holy shit, is that JR? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, pull over, pull over, pull over. What's up, bitches? JR! Did you get the shit, man? Hell yeah, I got the shit. Alright, good, good. Everybody's here. This is the way it's all gonna work out. Dude's place is like three houses down. Uh, we've got all the stuff in the back. We're all prepped, we're ready to go. We get out. We get the stuff laid out on the side, laid out on the tarp, bring it over to the front of the steps. I know, I know, I know. Now, Greg, you're light on your feet, surprisingly. So I want you to uh, get the twine or whatever the hell else we picked up right. and get that strung across so that when he comes out, right. he's not going to see it, right? Done. Once that's done, it's light a fire, ring the bell, bang on his door. What the fuck is that? Is that the cops? Nah, it's not the fucking cops. Calm down, Jesus. All right, hold on a minute. Okay. Let me put this on. Don't break this. This is my dad-in-law's. This breaks, <laughs> I'm dead. Is that good? For sure. All right. Let's do this. We ready for this? Let's go. I don't know. Okay, let's go. You ready for this? Let's do it. Dude, do you have the rest of the ship? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Alright, got it. Oh, 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 thank God I'm wearing this. It's a thing. What the hell is this? What is this? Friggin' Barry and Andre the Giant? Oh, Christ. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. This guy's gonna fucking pay. Oh man, that's gross. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Fucking speed Later through that stop <laughs> Speed through that stop sign. Don't stop. Just go. <laughs> oh, my God. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. That, guy's got, that guy <laughs> is going to need to fucking shower for three weeks to get that fucking smell out. <laughs> Happy fucking retirement, Woo! man. <laughs> Fucking done this year. Here, take this turn. Take this yeah, turn. Okay, quick, okay. quick, quick, quick. Make well, sure you think, hook it, man. That was the stinkiest shit ever. Oh, man. Guys, right, so let's get changed up and uh, we'll meet up at the pub in an hour. Sounds good. Oh, Sounds so good. Good. I need to wash the stink off, man. <laughs> Greg, PFO, man. Fucking right, brother. PFO. Don's not the only gay guy we work with, huh? Fuck yeah, you. Don likes beer, whiskey. <laughs> Every time I see this guy, he's got some gay pink or purple drink. Like, what the fuck's up, officer? Man, look at this drink. It's fucking classic. <laughs> My wife picked me up. 
because I was the one guy at the bar who wasn't drinking a beer. Dude, it's because she thought you were gay. She thought she could have a night <laughs> unloading her problems and worries off on you and not have to go home with you, but the problem is she got shit-faced and went home with you anyway. Wanted the tube steak and ended up with the bar swamp donkey. You know what? Oh. Fuck you. I love my wife. And what the fuck about you telling me about women? Your last girlfriend before Lisa was your 12th grade fucking cousin. And she had to take you to prom because no one else would. Yeah, well, for your information, my cousin is very attractive. And just so you know, she's my cousin through marriage, not blood. And bud, I've been with more girls than you even looked at. One look at this face makes them all soft and wet. I've been with more girls than PMS. Dude, the only time a chick gets wet for you is when you have her take a bath first. <laughs> and you know what? Just like PMS, once they get it, they don't want anything but to get rid of it. Oh, <laughs> song? <laughs> Thirties. What were your dads doing in their thirties? Mine was an old master carpenter. Mine started as a substitute, got all the way up to principal. My dad was a drunk who retired a cop. See, that's what I'm saying. Teacher, trade, trade. My old man worked for the government for thirty years. We work at a fucking call center. At least some of us do. Oh, <laughs> I mean, is that what you thought you'd be doing at this age? Helping the functioning handicapped portion of society work their cell phones? What the hell, Rick? Welders, tradesmen, that's a thing of the past. It's all about the new age quick help shit. I mean, I don't know about you, but I got a kid on the way. I got to do whatever I can to put food on the table. I know, Jared, but does it matter? I mean, does it really matter that we help some bitch in Idaho get new software on her cell phone? Her phone was working before she called us, I know, because she called us for help. It just feels like 10 minutes later, they forget about the call, which means they forgot about me, which means I'm useless. I just want to be part of something that matters. Well, join the fucking army then. Be like, it is what it is. I mean, they tear down the car plant, and then they open up big buildings and lease them out as call centers for people like us that they can rotate through every couple of years. Well, I know I want more. I don't want to just survive, I want to live. I want my son to want for nothing. I want my girl to be treated like the queen she deserves to be. I want fucking meaning, damn it. I mean, Chris, he's a fine boss. The director's always been fair. It's not them, they're in the same fucking position we are. They're just being told what to do and think by the corporate kingpins. Well, I mean, I have to admit this is it for me. I, I kind of like the corporate games. My only thing is, I wish they would recognize me for the work that I could do. I mean, I could take a, a good team and turn it into the best team. You guys know what this is? Yep. Yeah. How? How do you know what, what that is? It? It's a list of employees at Global Mobile. These are the employee numbers. Mine's right there. That's exactly my point. There are 14 rows on this sheet and all of them are fucking numbers. We're nothing to them but a fucking number. Where's my photo ID? Where's my name? See, this is what I've been thinking about all night. It's time for me to either man up and become something, or accept that that's as good as it's gonna get. That I'm gonna be a fucking number. Fuck this. My son deserves better than this. So does Joyce. Hell, so do I. You know, everyone has a moment of realization, and this is mine. Getting drunk with you guys. Jer about to be a daddy. Yeah. Greg I mean, about to be a cop. You're the only one who knew what this shit was. We deserve better than that. We deserve not to have to worry about our next paycheck. We deserve more. 
you know what guys, we'll see you on Monday. Later. Well, it's been a hoot of a night, boys. What's with that? Uh, it's corporate policy. You can't leave this stuff around for public use. All right, we'll see you later. Hey, you know what? Wait up. I'm going with you. Uh, you went on the scab? No, I mean I think I'm gonna stay and finish this one off. I gotta figure out how to be daddy. Later, bro. Babe, Hi. I thought you guys were staying at your dad's tonight. We were, but we came home. I was worried about you. I am worried about you. I just wanted to be here, so. I don't know, babe. If I didn't have you and Duncan, I don't know where I'd be. I'm barely here. I go to work to put food on the table and keep us warm. Is this really what I want to do for the rest of my life? Work at a call center? When we adopted Duncan, I never thought for a minute that I'd still be in the same place six years later. I mean, the people are great here. I love my friends, but the corporate games are just getting absurd. It's like there's this dark cloud of offshoring that's always over our heads. We're supposed to get up, go to work, and do our best. For what? To be told, do more, make less, and like it? I'm just staying motivated to get up, go to work, and be the person that they want me to be when at the drop of a hat I could be in the unemployment line. How the fuck is that fair? You deserve more. And Duncan sure as hell deserves more. And this is the best I can do? I just feel like a failure. But it's not about what's fair. It's about the options that you hold in your hand. Because you can do whatever you want. And we'll always be here for whatever you attempt to do. I know we love you. We just want you to be happy and healthy and present. Do what you have to do. And we will enjoy whatever hard times come together. It's not about what's fair. It's about what's here. It's about this. And I'll always be here for you. Coming in? I'm just going to finish this. PM. You should have woken me. Holy frick. I know you had a rough night last night. So I kind of let it go this time. Thanks. So listen, I wanted to talk to you about something. I ran into a friend from college the other day, and I was kind of shocked to hear that her little girl has Down syndrome. Do you remember Sarah Baxter? It's not important. Anyway, she's a legal aid now, and she may have to resign because she's having such a hard time finding someone to watch her little girl that isn't intimidated by her daughter's disability. I can see how somebody would be afraid that's a big job for somebody who doesn't have experience with disabilities. It's probably really hard to find somebody to look after your kid and be somebody that you trust to look after them. What if I did it? Even before Duncan, this stuff never really bothered me. And since his arrival, I realize it's really not that hard. You just have to pay a little extra attention to them and their needs. I could do it. You bring in some extra money, see how it goes. And if I can handle it, from what I read online, I can watch up to four kids 
and that's all extra money. And then we'd be helping out those parents that are having such a hard time finding someone to watch the little angels. What if you ask one of your friends to help out? You pay them, take in more kids, that's more money, and you help out more parents. You'd be okay with that? I wasn't sure you'd be alright coming home to a cluttered house and having dinner started a little bit later. What is this, 1950? <laughs> I can make my own dinner. I can make dinner for all of us. I know you miss working. At the same time, I know you love spending time with your boy. But why can't I help out a little? You should do this, Joy. You're amazing with Duncan. Every kid you've ever met loves you. Why not do it? There'd be a little bit of investment. You'd have to buy new toys. Food. You'd have to take a CPR course. Hell, I could even help out. I could build swings in the sandbox. You know, stuff for kids to play with in the yard. I'd have to build a fence and none of the little ninjas get away. But I <laughs> wanted to put that up anyways for Duncan. Do it, Joy Toy. You'd really be helping people, making a difference. Really? I don't know why, but I didn't think you'd want me to do this. Thank you, baby. I don't know why you'd ever think that, but yes, I want you to do it. You know I'm jealous. You're going to be doing a job that's instantly rewarding, and it's going to mean the world to those parents and kids. Just be sure that whoever you hire to help you, that you trust them, that you really trust them. The easiest way to know is just ask yourself, would you trust them with Duncan for the day? Okay? Mm -hmm. This is the fifth time I've run the numbers. It comes out the exact same every time. Well, I'm not going to ask you for sure again, but I will ask you if this is really what you want to do. And the last time I was this sure about anything, I was holding your hand saying I do. Now, there's been lots of days since then where I wish I'd let your hand go <laughs> right out of there screaming, but today is not one of those days. I would divorce you, but you don't make nearly enough money to make it worth my while. <laughs> We're going to do this today. I'm not even going to change. I'm heading over there now. Okay. See you soon. Okay. Hey, what are you doing up already? A little early for hunting, isn't it? <laughs> Can I sit down with you? You know what, Duncan? Daddy's got to go to work, but I'm going to be back soon, okay? And from now on, we're going to do a whole lot more playing together. Would you like that? Yeah? All right, see you soon, bud. Be good for your mom today. forget to do laundry this weekend? Chris, I have to thank you. This has been the most amazing weekend of my life. Hey, don't worry. Welcome to Upper Management. It's gonna feel like this every day. Chris, I decline your offer. As a matter of fact, here's my badge, my ID, and my desk key. I quit. Are you crazy? Just some sort of joke? No, sir. This is as real as it gets. Greg did it last week. JR is doing it with his unborn baby, and I stand before you doing it right now. What, ruining your life? Those last 10 years? Those are ruined years. The next 10, the next chapter is going to be written the way I want it to be written, not some bean counter who doesn't know my name. It's going to be day in, day out what I want it to be. And with the help of some special people, today, I'm changing my path. But I need you, Rick. I need good people. Then do me this one favor. If I'm good people, give it to Clark. He knows this place better than any of us. The processes, the flowcharts. Chris, I've seen Clark make a cubert board in Excel. Who does that? A man who time and time again has shown that he'll do whatever you or any other manager asks him to do. But you keep holding him down because he's not part of your inner circle. Well, make him part. 
You could do twice the job that I could do. He's no snake, but he's your man. Unless you're afraid of him. He's the one man here that can match wits with you, probably surpass you. He's the one guy that challenges you in meetings and about processes. You know what, I get it now. You're afraid that his success might hinder or surpass yours. You know what, Chris? If you want the best, if you want your pay next month, if you want to keep climbing that ladder, then that man down there at his desk 20 minutes early before every shift, he's your next manager. He's your ticket to success. Vacation day, sir? Oh, hey. No, not at all. I just handed my badge to Chris. I'm taking your advice and making the change. I can't work in a place where it looks like night all the time anymore. Well, it's been a slice. All right, enough. Hey, and don't take any shit from JR. Never have, never will. All right, man. Keep in touch. He did it. Buddy. Good, you tell me. How'd the uh, appointment go? Healthy? Yeah, man, everything's great. I just dropped Lisa off, saw some arms, some legs, brown thing. I think it was a head. I don't know, check this out. Christ, a little JR. Is the world ready? Hey, man, that's my little princess you're talking about. You know I'm joking, man. She's beautiful. Hang on to that. You'll look at that in tough times, good times, and everything in between. I'm happy for you, Jay. I mean that. You know what I'm scared of the most? Before all this, I only had to worry about one dick, my dick. Now all of a sudden, I hate every other dick on the planet. Gotta worry about every pecker coming within 100 feet of my little princess. You know what scares me most? The fact that you actually care about something other than your dick. A year ago, if somebody would have told me that you were gonna be a father and that you actually gave a shit, I would have asked if we were talking about the same JR. So man, the place looks great, you did it. Yeah, it's coming together. You still gonna apply for that new manager job? Gotta worry about my family now, my little princess. Gotta do what's best for them and not me. And if you and Greg proved anything, it's never too late to change. Right on, man. All right, buddy. I look around here, all I see. Sunshine staring straight back at me. I finally got it right. I made it through the darkest night. I can't believe that I ever thought There wasn't anything I could be taught about Stepping up Seems I was wrong about this old pup Cause my calling led me here I never listened all those years Had my life on hold Looking for the easy road But with all that I went through held on to him and you it only took one special boy to show me this special joy i used to 
used to think that I'd let them down They'd be better off with me not around But now it's clear I found my place right here Sometimes it takes a stronger man to reach out For that helping hand when he's feeling weak When he's brought down to his knees Cause my calling led me here I should have listened all those years Had my life on hold Searching for the easy but he's, because he's been seen taking dumps all over the office. Or, oh my god. <laughs> Where are you two Nancy's at? In the bathroom no, pool? Hold on, hold on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck! Hold on a second there. Just hypothetical, big right, fella. <laughs> I like the double tap. <laughs> no, just big fella. Whoa. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting for what that was going to start. <laughs> what? Ruining your life? <laughs> oh, sorry. You can be scared and that's alright. Open the door, so. But you're not the only one. Are you actually filming this? Oh, step on up. Show life what you. What's up, partner? No, I'm cut. I need to put that in my face. Those have been the most. I just, I just fucking came to get some staples, you know? <laughs> yeah, have you ever? <laughs> I know, I could not. <laughs> Granny Joel, go, go. Cut. Dude, what the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? I held on to him and he was the only one special boy. Dude! I'm enjoying this. This is kind of fun. Making the mistakes on purpose, man. I had to set up this whole thing where he said, I'm wearing these pants. He's just so good. You know, that's ass all night. Thank you, Julius, for getting that. Alright, quiet on the set. And action. Cut! Look. Loan. <laughs> I need a snake. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> I know that I can come to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I come to you, I. <laughs> I'm like, why is this I really didn't, close? Rick, relax. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Oh, Josh, Josh, we're doing it like right now. Quite on set. That's okay. Go ahead. Nom 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 nom. Anyway, so go ahead. Wow. <laughs> oh, what do I say, man? <laughs> I thought you were. Add adjective here. It's mad. Julius, this time do it without any fuck-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to talk to JR when he gets in. Ah, uh, I agree. Sorry, fuck. <laughs> Let's do it again. I think you need to talk to JR. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Gone, gone. Turn around. House phone! I don't know. I'm in the zone. The action Auto zone? zone? <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? No the laughing! Friend. Hi, Chris. Going. Well, it was going much better about until about 15 minutes ago. Fuck! <laughs> going. Oh, Flag. <laughs> Were you confrontational with a uh, confrontational with a customer? Right, <laughs> confrontational? You've been known to be confrontational. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir, will be confrontational no more. <laughs>